Okay, so making a switch is kind of similar to making a door, except it's sideways, and it's a bit more tricky. But the easiest way to make everything would be to rotate a part that's going to be a switch around our pivot. As you can see, this is the pivot right here, and we can change it inside of the property window in the pivot and pivot offset. So in the position, we can see that this is the X, and we would want to move it by like, let's say two. Right, so you'd have something like this that's going to rotate around like there. But we can also make something in Blender because we can have a pivot point there. So we'll just add a mirror modifier on the Y axis. Then I'm going to enable the screencast keys. Then we can just make this part longer and make sure we don't move anything from the pivot point right here. Right, we just extrude. Then we select clipping and just extrude this inwards. So this can be our lever model. I'm just gonna make it like a little bit longer like this. So now we just select file, export and FBX. We change this scale to be 0.05. We can name this one switch and we just change Z to forward and apply the transforms and just export as FBX. And now when we are in studio, we need to go into the home tab and click on import 3D, select our switch. And what you want to do in here is to set the pivot to scene origin, make sure this is checked and just import right so we'll also have a pivot point right there then you can just scale this one down and we just have our switch model right here i'm going to name this one switch and just change it to like a metal so this is our switch and i'm going to do a quick wall and we can just have it like so now we need to make sure that the pivot point is inside of the wall around right there so when we rotate the switch it's going to look like this and i'm going to show two ways of doing it one is going to be with a geometrical drag style which is the proper way of doing it and also one for physical and i'm going to show you why you shouldn't use the physical one later on so i'm going to just group this switch and also i need to make sure that it's set to can't collide and i'm going to show the physical one here so we have our switch and we also need a hinge part like I said, it's going to be similar to the door, but we're actually not going to rotate anything around the hinge part. We're just going to use the pivot point. So this part size can be just set to 1, and we need to change its C-frame to be the same as the switch's pivot point, or the word origin, I mean. So we go to the origin and position from switch, and just paste it inside of the C-frame position of the part. So they should align like this, because if you don't do so, the attachments are going to be off and it might put the switch inside of the wall. And I'm going to rename this part to hinge and also anchor it and disable its collision because we don't need them. Right, we also don't need any collisions on the switch, so make sure to disable that also. And when we are at this switch, we have the orientation set to 0 by 180 by 0. That's 180 on the Y axis. We need to change the Y1 to be 0 and X to be 90. It will make it so the X and Z coordinates are going to switch with each other, as you can see right here. If you don't do that, this switch doesn't work because it's not going to rotate around the pivot properly. So anyways, now we need few attachments. One attachment inside of the switch, then this one switch attachment and this one needs to be positioned in the pivot point so I can copy the origin position go to the attachment and in the word C frame paste it in the position right here then the hinge also needs a hinge attachment and a reference instance for the drag detector which is a dragger attachment and let's also put a hinge constraint into the hinge select the attachment 0 to be the switch attachment and attachment 1 to be the hinge attachment like this so I have already enabled it you can see the constraint details right here in the model tab if you're not seeing your hinge but now we have this hinge and it's not rotated properly so let's fix that we can start from the switch attachment the attachment x axis has to be aligned with the with the axis in which the switch is going to rotate in so in our case it's going to be like this and we also need to change the secondary axis to point to the switch like this you can see we are getting an error that the rotation axis aren't aligned so now we need to go to the hinge attachment so in the hinge attachment the orange axis Axis, which is the secondary one needs to point to the switch and the X axis needs to be on the line so it's the same as the switch attachment but for the dragger attachment as this is the reference instance we need to do the opposite so the yellow one points to the switch and the orange one points to the different direction like so now if I do a play test the switch is going to fall to the bottom and it's going to be inside of the wall so we need to add some limits to the hinge and we do so in the property window in the hinge we can change the actuator type to be motor and we can just select the limits enabled set the lower angle to be something like 65 like you can already see that we are getting the limits right here and also the upper angle to be 65 on plus plus. and now if you hover over the hinge constraint you should have something like this this projection of secondary axis it should be correct whether it's pointing to the bottom like here or to the top 
So right now we just need to add a drag detector into the switch and we need to do a few tweaks. So the reference instance is the dragger attachment that we changed previously and the drag style needs to be set to rotate axis right here. Right and the response style is physical and also inside of the axis we want to have one on the Y like so and that should be everything for the setup itself so if I play test it it should be working fine. Yep, I am able to just drag the switch like so. Alright, so this is just for setting up the switch movement or the switch behavior, but we also need to script few things, which is a state and we also need to have a door. So the door is going to be just a part that's going to be moving left and right. Let's name this one door and let's put it inside of the switch model. Then let's add a folder and name this one scripts and add a script and then also duplicate it. One is going to be door open and one is going to be just switch. This door open script needs to have a run context set to client because you're just going to listen to the attribute change signal and then it's going to open the door. And the switch script, I'm just gonna make references to everything. So it's going to be like so. And now we just do switch set attribute is on and set it to false right and what the script is going to do right now we have this hinge constraint it has a property called current angle and whenever the switch gets dragged we want to basically just check that and we do that in the switch drag that drag continue event and just connect a function to it and we just do local angle is equal to hinge constraint that current angle and also this property is read only. So we can change it ourselves through the script. And now we just need to print out the angle. So right now if I drag it, you can see that we have the angle just printing out right here. Right, but it's not stopping, it's not doing anything else. And that's why you have to implement custom logic for it. So let's do it. And at first there is few things that we need to check. We definitely need to check if the angle is more or equal to 65 or angle is less or equal to minus 65 to so basically check if it reached the threshold and i would also recommend getting something like a state because we don't want to change the attribute constantly whenever it's outside of this range basically because we just want to do it once and then just snap it somewhere and for snapping i'm just going to show that later but right now we need a state And the state is going to be the attribute, so we get it here. There is also a check that we need to do if the player, let's say, starts dragging a switch from a certain position. And we don't want to snap it back here immediately after the player, you know, drags it. So that's why we need the state. And also the state is going to be set depending if the angle of the hinge constraint was more or less than zero. If it was more, right? If it was right here. This for some reason was on plus and the top one was on minus, right? But anyway, if the player starts to drag, it's going to be on plus. So if the state that we get is going to be on, which means that it's going to be true, is equal to angle more than zero, in this case it would be true, then we don't want to do anything, but if it was on minus, which means if it was on top, then we want to change the state and just snap it so we do if state is equal to angle more than zero then we do switch set attribute is on to angle less than zero so if this one is going to be true which means that the state is going to be different then it's going to reverse it so just to simplify everything this switch is going to be on bottom so it's going to be in the off state and right here we check if it's more than zero so right here it will be if false is equal to true then we want to change the state and that just changes the attribute but we also want to like i said snap it so we need to add a weld constraint and by default this weld constraint is going to be disabled part zero is going to be the hinge and part one is going to be the switch and something like this should appear and that means it's connected so we make the weld constraint reference and then right here we want to enable the weld constraint whenever it got to the point so that way it snaps and then we can also do a task delay function let's say after one second it's basically going to enable the drag detector And why that? Well, because we also want to disable the drag detector for a bit here. And this is just a in-case thing, so people don't spam the switch over and over again. So right now, if I drag it up, you can see that it's not going to snap or do anything. But if I move it all the way up, 
it snapped and and I can't move it down anymore because we need to disable the weld whenever we start dragging it. And we do so in the switch drag that drag start event and we set the weld constraint enabled to false. And also so it behaves like a normal switch in the drag end event we want to enable it. So right now whenever I drag it and let go, it's going to just snap right here, but it's not going to change the attribute or anything. It will change it only if I pull it all the way up. Oh, and it's not dragging down. Wait. That's also because you have to get the state in the drag start function. So now I should be able to just drag it up and down. Yep, like so. So that's everything for the switch itself. And now let's just open the door. Again, references to everything and we also need twin service. And in this script with a local run context, we need to do something that you basically can't do in a normal local script. That would be in this place. We need to listen to a attribute change signal on the switch. So we do switch get attribute change signal. The signal is is on and we connect a function. Then we get the attribute to check if it's on or not. We make a reference to the door part. We make twin info. So we do twin info that new. Time is going to be one second. The easing style is going to be cubic and easing direction in and out. And right here, depending if it was on or not, we want to get a certain value. And the value is going to be the distance that this door is going to be moved in. So we can do local distance is equal to, let's say, three. So right here, we just do a check. If is on, then distance is equal to minus distance like this then we make the twin by twin service create door part twin info and then a property table right here that is showing us here we just need to change the c frame so we do c frame is equal to door part that c frame plus vector free that new and we need to move the door on the z right here so it's going to be zero zero and then distance and then we just do twin play and let me just not forget to anchor the door so right now it's in the off state and if i move it up it's not going to do anything for whatever reason oh because i proper bro get attribute change signal not get property oh my god but anyway for the showcase now if i just move it up it's going to open like this. And I said at the beginning that this is the wrong way of doing it. And why? Well, that's because if I move it quickly and then let go, you can see that it snaps like this. And then I'm just gonna move it up and nothing actually happened. Same if I move it down. That's because it just breaks. And I don't know why that happens, but we have to like pull it again for it to work. But I guess that's because it's rendering the physics server sided. You can see like weird stuff just going on. So I'm going to show you a better way of doing it. And that's going to be with the geometrical response style in the drag detector. And also I will be leaving this place and copy logged with the switches in the description. So if any of you guys had any problems or didn't manage to follow the tutorial right, you will basically just have the model available for you and, and you would be able to see what you did wrong. But yeah, so I'm just going to duplicate the model and name this one switch model underscore geo. And this one is going to go right here. And since this one is geometrical, we don't need the hinge and we don't need the switch attachment. If I anchor the switch, it's going to automatically change to geometrical, but I'm going to change it anyway. And the only thing we have to change right now is the script right here. The door open is going to stay the same because this only listens to an attribute. But in here, I'm just going to clean some stuff up like this and the weld constraint. We will need the drag start and drag end because it's anchored, it's going to automatically snap. And since we don't have the hinge constraint anymore, we have to somehow get the angle in a different way and we can get it from the drag detector. But how do we get it from the drag detector? Well, we need to scroll down to the drag frame right here. You can see that it has the position and the orientation, which means that the drag frame is a C frame. So we do switch drag that drag frame and we need the orientation and this one returns x y and the z orientation so we do x y and z and we do local angle is equal to math that degrees because this one is given in radians from the z variable and now i'm just going to clean this basically so we are just left with the attribute 
we need a different place to set this state somewhere and we can do it under the attribute and right here we basically just do the same as we would do here but instead of the get attribute we can just do what we already have which is to check if the angle is less than zero and then we also need a task spawn function which will disable the drag detector then wait for one second and then enable the drag detector and that's basically everything for the script itself but we need to do some stuff to the drag detector now the first thing being going down to the axis and right now it would rotate on the y axis because it's set to one on the y and we want to rotate it on the z axis so instead of having one on the y we need to have one on the z like this and this drag detector also doesn't have limits right now like the hinge constraint did and we just set them down in the drag limits right here we have the max drag angle which would be 65 in this case and the minimum drag angle which is minus 65 so if i play test it it should be working fine right if i drag it down huh? wait why is it behaving like it? oh okay i think i know what i did wrong it's good that i'm getting this problem right now now so so you guys would know what to do so in the switches pivot right the orientation right here we just want to zero that out like this so right now if i try to move the switch it's going to move up and down and you can see that it's also disabling the drag detector and it's snapping to place so yeah we have our working switches and unlike the previous one if i quickly just stop moving this one like this if i just move it a bit up and then just snap it it's just gonna go there so that's the switch or the lever that's opening a door and yeah that's basically going to be everything for today and hope you had a nice day and see ya guys